Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So I just had a chance to see the Guardians of the Galaxy IMAX preview. So this is going to be a review of that. Whenever I get to spoilers, I'll just say spoiler warning, but I'm going to do my non-spoilery review first. It was just 17 minutes. The full movie is a little over two hours, so it almost felt like nothing. Like it blew right by. Hello to new people. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Marvel videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I have a whole bunch of links down in the description if you want to travel down the YouTube Marvel rabbit hole. So most of the footage expanded on things we've already seen in the trailers, like the lineup. It adds a lot more context for other characters like Gamora, Karen Gillan's Nebula, Ronan. Most of the stuff we saw took place inside that prison and it's really designed to tell non-Marvel, you know, super comic book geeks who these characters are. It's really meant for people that haven't read the comics, you know, who are these people, what are their motivations. I know a lot of you ask me sometimes if you need to read a book or a comic before you see an episode of TV or a movie. You do not need to read anything before you go to see Guardians. The movie does all the work. It takes care of all the explaining in really funny, quick ways. It doesn't waste any time that could be used to move the story forward, which is amazing. I also really enjoyed that each of the characters in the Guardians, like the Guardian characters, narrate the other characters' backstories. Based on what we saw, I feel like the movie will work so well that it doesn't need to explain anything. Even if you don't know anything about the comics, you're going to love this movie. Even way back during Comic-Con last year when we were all sitting in the audience and we saw that really short teaser of the lineup with Hooked on a Feeling set to it, I feel like we understood that this is going to be the kind of movie that's going to change what you think superhero movies are allowed to do. It makes me very, very hopeful for what even weirder movies like Doctor Strange are going to look like whenever they get here. Bottom line is you have to go see this movie when it comes out on August 1st. If you have the opportunity to see it in IMAX, definitely do, but you do not need to see it in 3D. I feel like it hurts more movies than it helps, but it's going to be awesome no matter what format you see it in. So let's talk about spoilers now. Careful in case you don't want to know anything because I'm just going to go beat for beat what we actually saw in the footage. So everybody ready? Here we go. So we open on John C. Riley dialogue when they're getting processed, but it opens up and shows us bits from different characters like Ronan kneeling at Thanos' rocket throne from Avengers. The rocket throne shows up in almost every comic that Thanos is in. It's one of the most iconic set pieces. It's a big part of his character. We start getting everyone's backstories. Gamora, who was basically adopted by Thanos and turned into a killing machine, she lets us know that what she came from is so much worse than the threat of Ronan's accuser core, that that's just part of the reason why she's so willing to go apeshit. Like the threats that they face aren't half as bad as Thanos. Thanos is way worse, but he actually was not in the footage. That was unfortunate. We also kind of learn what the relationship between her character and Karen Gillan's Nebula is. You know, they're basically both like daughters of Thanos, and Nebula is just jealous that Gamora gets the favorable treatment as the adopted daughter. Just imagine a prequel with those three characters, like a Disney movie. It'd be like some awful, terrible, twisted Disney princess tale. I would totally go see that. Then we learn a little bit about Peter Quill, especially how attached he is to his artifacts from Earth. He's the son of a human woman and the Spartoi Emperor. He's basically a prince who just hates his father. He spent most of his adult life in space traveling as part of Yondu's crew of thieves. Michael Rooker's Yondu is essentially a pirate in this movie, so you can understand why they cast Michael Rooker. There is a little bit of shipping between Gamora and Peter Quill, but if you've read the comics then you know she doesn't really have relationships like normal people do, so they're not like a couple or anything. Rocket Raccoon explains Drax, saying he's from this super literate race. It's pretty hilarious. It just comes off as funny because, you know, you look at him and he's freaking huge. Just picture him wearing a pair of reading glasses. Then we get a good shot of Raccoon getting hosed down and you see all the cybernetic implants in his body. It's really horrific. He's basically a normal raccoon that was experimented on. That's how he gained bipedal motion, the ability to speak in his heightened intelligence. Groot mostly comes off as the gentle giant that he's seen like in the trailers. You know, he's like a big puppy dog. But then they all get walked into Gen Pop and people start going crazy. Someone tries to beat the crap out of Peter Quill until Rocket and Groot go crazy on him and declare he's under their protection. That's actually the scene from the trailer with them spinning around screaming. It's pretty funny. Groot disarms one of them by growing roots up his nose. So then it moves into prison break mode, which is like a huge action set piece. They basically plan something, then Groot totally messes it up, not wanting to hurt anyone. And it's just non-stop action until they get caught. It's basically like that scene from Winter Soldier wherever Captain America jumped on the ship in the beginning and took down everyone on the boat without stopping to take a breath. It's like a non-stop continuous action scene. Very intense, very cool. Then it moves on to like a rocket computer hacking scene and reminded me of that scene in the Avengers whenever Bruce Banner and Tony Stark are geeking out in the staff room. I feel like the three of them would have a good time together, making science. So then we get to see a little bit more of the bad guys. 
It was only Ronan kneeling at Thanos' rocket throne. No Thanos, but still very cool. And we got to see a full-on shot of Michael Rooker. This is what he looks like. Ronan's Dark Aster, this huge, huge ship, is supposed to be like a couple miles long, is awesome. We also got to see a longer version of the trailer scene where Rocket is flying his warbird around nowhere, destroying Ronan's Necrocraft ships. It's basically like one of the big battle scenes. That was pretty much it. It actually didn't seem like a whole lot of footage. It was just so awesome. It just went by so fast. Marvel is kind of like a crack dealer standing on the corner, just giving away free footage. You definitely get the sense, though, that Marvel's building up to some sort of Thanos-centric movie, but it's still a long ways off. I just can't wait to hear Josh Brolin's Thanos voice. They basically did most of the movie before they cast him. They're basically just bringing him in at the end to do the dialogue. Even though we haven't even seen the movie yet, there have already been a lot of rumors about what's going to be happening in the sequel and possible crossovers with other Marvel teams, but I feel like this movie just by itself is going to be a huge watershed moment for weirdness. This really is like the test for Phase 3 next year. Can Marvel spend $150 million on weirdness of this level? Like, I'm a huge fan of the comics, so of course I would say yes, but I feel like this movie is so non-geek friendly that it's totally something you could take your mom to and she would also enjoy. Unless your mom is also a comic book geek, and then right on. The actual movie isn't going to be out till August 1st, so Guardians will not be going to Comic-Con. They're going to be promoting their other upcoming movies like Avengers 2, Ant-Man, and probably confirming which other films would be part of Phase 3. I think those other two will be Doctor Strange and Black Widow. I'm definitely planning on Doctor Strange, but the other option instead of Black Widow would be the second Guardians movie, the Guardians sequel. Marvel hasn't officially said anything about a Guardians sequel, but they typically release sequels, you know, every two to three years, so I'm really hoping we don't have to wait all the way to Phase 4 before we see Guardians 2. But if you had a chance to see that IMAX footage, let me know in the comments what was your favorite moment, and if you didn't get to see it, what are you looking forward to most in the movie? I know we all just want to see more Infinity Gauntlet. We just want to see all the gems come together. So my next bonus video is going to post next week. Be sure to subscribe to get it. Tons of Marvel links down in the description, so check that. Also, you can click here to get my Ronan the Accuser video, and you can click here to learn about Brandon Routh becoming the new Adam character on Arrow Season 3. That's actually pretty exciting. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.